Oh, what a case. A prominent California defense attorney and three police officers are now among nine people who have faced charges in the 2012 disappearance and murder of this man, 26-year-old Corey Kaufman. Investigators say they were all part of an elaborate conspiracy to kill Kaufman and cover it up. Authorities say Kaufman was trying to steal scrap metal and irrigation pipes from a property that was owned by that defense attorney and who was murdered. What's this all about? Well, defense attorney, former prosecutor Robert Schlack joins us, along with criminal defense attorney and co-founder of the American Patriarch Heroes Fund, Vincent Tremarco, Jr. Vincent, Robert, good to see you. Good afternoon. Uh, Rob, let me start with you. Uh, a, a prominent defense attorney, guy runs for a district attorney uh, of the county, and now he's in the clinker in handcuffs behind bars. What's this all about? It's a crazy set of facts and a crazy story, because if you look at it, he's a property owner. He's a criminal defense attorney. He ran for district attorney. He's represented numerous people that are affiliated with this case over the course of their careers. There's a bail bonds company owner that's involved in this case that's been charged. His wife, his daughter, I believe, have been charged as well with all these crimes. This is a man who just ran and lost trying to unseat the DA who's prosecuting him. And I think the question becomes, was he running because he really wanted that seat? Or was he <clears> running <throat> because he was potentially trying to squash the investigation that he was a part that's of? That's fascinating. Vincent, I mean, look, uh, prominent defense attorney attorneys like you guys, you know the cops, you got friends, you know bail bonds, I mean, you know stuff that goes on. Sometimes it has happened in the past that they crossed the line. That's it, right. That's right. It's, it's very typical in a small town situation like this for a criminal defense attorney to know everybody. He's very familiar with the local criminal element because, let's face it, he's representing them. So you know the bail bonds people, you know the local, um, the local convenience store managers, um, and you, you get very familiar and you get very close to these people. And I think that's what's happening here, and he's become a target. Now, for, uh, he has denied, of course, these charges. He says they are absurd, and obviously this potentially could go to trial. I mean, how, how do you defend yourself against this, and what do you do? And what potential evidence could the prosecutors have? Well, obviously, when you have a situation where there are so many defendants facing so many separate possible punishments and their exposures can be different, uh, I think Vince would agree with this, is the fact that you're going to have, if you don't already have someone cooperating with them, you're going to have more people That's who right. are on the lower level of the totem pole would flip or cooperate and they'll become cooperating witnesses because the DA has an idea of what this case is about. They have pieces of the puzzle. They don't have all the pieces. And I think that they need someone from the inside to tell them what really happened here, who instructed who as to what, are there text messages, emails, phone calls that they can get, which would help build their case. Absolutely right. And there's a massive amount of high-tech data from cell phones, which is very interesting because this is... Uh, a very a very modern science now that we're seeing in, in criminal uh, criminal cases and they have cell phone data tracking uh, the individuals who allegedly committed the murder to and from the site where the body was buried mm. so that's some of the most compelling evidence that I was able to read from the affidavit of indictment what do you think will happen I mean it sounds like you watch Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. Yeah, sure. I mean, this sounds like, look, uh, Mr. Carson is uh, innocent before proven guilty. He says it's, quote, absurd, so obviously not disparaging in any manner. But, but this sounds like the screenwriters could write this type of, you know, Better Call Saul episode when they write a, a lawyer allegedly getting uh, in uh, hoots with some of these guys, that, That's the way it reads. And unfortunately, I think, uh, after reading extensively through the paperwork, this looks like a man that was trying to protect his property and a situation that went awry, and then later trying to cover it up. And I think that's wherein lies the problem. So if they had just, you know, said, hey, this is what happened. We had a, you know, we, we tried to stop a, a robbery, and this is, this is what occurred, and somebody got hurt, and everybody just tightened up, and uh, three years went by, and they... They brought him in. I mean, is this something that you, you could potentially plead to, or, is, or, or do you have a legitimate defense in, in any manner by saying I was being robbed and this well, is what I, happened? Well, I think the question is going to be what can they prove? We're speaking to Mr. Carson. What can they prove he was involved in? What specific instructions did he give? Because as Vince was saying, this is a property owner who's now been the victim of numerous thefts. And this was a, an individual where the alleged victim here, I'm not the, the victim here was a scrapper. He was stealing things to sell and recycle, he was scrap metal. And copper wire were being taken from Mr. Carson's property. So if, what, did he instruct individuals to do this or did he say, I need you guys to protect my property and you guys did it on their own and he didn't oh, know? Yeah. Then I don't think he's guilty of any murder. He's not guilty of any conspiracy. And as pertains to any alleged cover up, again, what did he say? Did he instruct them to do anything or were these people doing it on their own? Right. And unfortunately, uh, the three police officers that got involved, the way I take it is their, their involvement is minimal. And it's unfortunate that you have three local cops that have personal relationships with people 
people in that town and they're being brought into this. And, um, you know, as far as Carson goes, I, I don't believe he wanted anybody killed. And I think that's the way it's going to play out. Um, but a very interesting case. Well, you guys are officers of the court, you know, as they say, and obviously we'll see as this follows as it goes. Uh, to see what happens to Mr. Carson and the rest. Thanks, Eric. Man, what a Thank case. You. Thank you. Good to see you. Julie? All right. In case you didn't know, hot buttered rolls apparently are not the best thing since sliced bread for one cafe customer in Missouri. A woman is suing Lambert's Cafe. It's an eatery known for tossing hot rolls to hungry customers. She says one of those rolls hit her in the eye last September, causing damage to her head, neck, and vision. The woman is now seeking $25,000 from the restaurant for medical bills and legal fees. Yeah, we got the lawyers right here. They can also handle that case. <laughs> well, caught on camera. Take a look at this. Rescuers arrived on the scene. Oh, man, look at him. A horse. He got trapped in a well. Coming up, we'll tell you how he ended up there. Plus, auto sales are revving up. Have you bought a car lately? Well, you are among many. And one business expert says it makes sense for Americans to buy cars right now. He's going he's gonna to explain why next. Oh,